Good morning, St. Nicholas. It is good to be with you. And I bring you greetings from Bishop Mary and Buddy and the entire diocesan staff. Please know that you are in our prayers every day and as well as those you serve. In the name of the crucified risen one, the one who breathes new life into the world, amen. It was the first day of the week and the disciples were in lockdown, doors shut. Their savior had been nailed to a cross. They were guilty by association. They had reason to be afraid. They had reason to lock the doors. Imagine what it must have been like, a community of disciples, followers of Jesus, men, women, and children, huddled in a darkened room, whispering, hoping not to be noticed. The world had closed in around them. They were out of breath. An intimate yet anxious gathering, trying to make sense of recent events. Just a week earlier, they had yelled Hosanna as their Messiah entered the gates of Jerusalem, Jesus their King. They had followed him for months and some even for years, witnessing his life-giving and liberating miracles and learning from and following the way of love with this great rabbi. But in the last few days, everything had gone wrong. Their dream that the kingdom would be restored was shattered. It started with a Passover meal with Jesus in Jerusalem, their last meal together. And Jesus had said some things that night that they still didn't quite understand. Something about the fulfillment of the kingdom of God and oh, how they desired that kingdom to be fulfilled, to be free from the oppressive powers of this world. Oh, how they yearn to breathe freely as the whole and beloved people God made them to be. But things had gone wrong. Their savior had been nailed to a cross and his body laid in a tomb, a tomb that was now empty. Rumors spread that Mary Magdalene saw Jesus and was this true? Was Jesus a lie? Peter and the other disciple had gone to the tomb with her and all they saw were linen wrappings lying on the ground. They were here, huddled in the darkness, in lockdown for fear of their lives. You know, sometimes we stand behind shut doors for safety. This past year, we've lived much of our lives shuttered behind closed doors in isolation due to COVID-19. Holding our breath for a new day that would surely come when we could breathe more deeply and more freely. This past year, stepping outdoors has been somewhat dangerous. Stepping outside has been dangerous for many for years. I think of black and brown mothers and fathers worried each morning their whole lives as their children head out into the world. Would they come home that night? The world can be a dangerous place. Behind shut doors, we can rest our wounded and weary bodies. And on that first day of the week, Jesus appeared to the disciples, bearing his wounds, breathing on them and saying, peace be with you. Jesus came to them. He came amid their pain and offered them comfort. He came in the thick of their anxiety and offered them peace. And Jesus meets us too in our own lockdown, our own brokenness, our anxiety and uncertainty, our disappointments, and offers us peace, comfort and healing, space to breathe. Peace be with you, shalom. This word shalom means more than the absence of violence and harm. It means fulfillment, completion, wholeness, and health. And so when Jesus said, shalom be with you, the disciples heard his desires that they flourish fully as the people God created them to be, whole, full, and free. The way of life and the way of love that Jesus had shown them. Poet, 
Imelda Cooper captures the scene of this community broken yet held together with the breath of the spirit on this day well. Fractured, cracked, held together in wholeness, completeness, by the air of the spirit, the putty of trust, the glue of friendship, the cement of scripture, serving a purpose, beautifying the world, testifying to the power, strength, and possibilities of limitations embraced. The second half of the poem provides the key to the rest of our reading today. Serving a purpose, beautifying the world, testifying to the power, strength, and possibilities of limitations embraced. Jesus had come to them behind shut and locked doors to bring peace to the disciples. But more than that, he gave to them the power and authority to give that peace to others. So Jesus said to them a second time, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. As I hear the words, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I recall my children when they were infants. I would blow gently on their faces. And when I did, their eyes sparkled and their arms flew up and they breathed deeply, inhaling my own breath. Almost caught by surprise by the power of their mother's breath. I wonder if those in that room responded the same ways. Eyes lit up, arms in the air, breathing deeply to receive the Holy Spirit, empowered. He breathed on them the powerful breath at the beginning of creation that swept over the dark waters, making meaning out of chaos. He breathed on them the living breath of God that transformed dust into humanity. He breathed out so that they could breathe in the power of the Holy Spirit and spread to others the good news that Christ indeed is risen. In Jesus' breath, they were given the answers to their questions about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God would be fulfilled through them. Jesus gave them the power to forgive sins, to heal the world, to offer shalom to everyone. But hold on, before we can get to the place where the disciples fling open the doors, ready to proclaim the kingdom, the gospel writer tells us that those gathered were not complete. Remember, Thomas wasn't with them. And when Thomas returns, they tell him that they have seen the Lord. And not like the other disciples, Thomas doesn't believe. You know, sometimes Thomas gets a bad rap for his disbelief, <laughs> but don't we all have doubts? Mary Magdalene had mistaken Jesus for the gardener. <laughs> the disciples hadn't believed Mary when she told them she had seen the Lord. And like us, Thomas had to see for himself as well. So Jesus met Thomas and he met, meets us where we are. So a week later, Thomas is with the disciples at the house. Again, the doors are shut. Again, Jesus comes through those doors, stands among them and says, peace be with you. Jesus had come to give Thomas what he needed. Put your finger here and see me, see my hands. Jesus said, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. And this, Thomas, this appearance to Thomas is often interpreted as Jesus providing Thomas the physical evidence that he needs to believe that Jesus is indeed alive. But I wonder whether the appearance speaks more deeply about the landscape of the resurrected life and the wounds that are carried forward into new life. Jesus invites Thomas into the resurrected life through his very wounds. And he does so not to suggest that wounds are necessary, but it is through the wounds themselves that new life emerges. 
wounds hold memories and are the landscape through which redemption emerges. New life does not erase the wounds of history, but is informed by them. And so it is with us today. We have been through two Easter's in lockdown. Our community, our country, the world is enduring a great trauma through the pandemic of COVID and indeed multiple pandemics, the pandemics of racism and gun violence. But we are invited at this time by Jesus as he bears the wounds of the world to Thomas and to the disciples gathered into the hard work of remembering our histories, naming the wounds of our time, exploring their particularities, learning from them, placing them before God so that all our wounds, both private and public, our local and global, can be redeemed. And as we do, we will receive the breath of new life that has already been given to us. And through that work with one another, we will meet Jesus and our hearts will proclaim with Thomas, my Lord and my God, this God who accompanies us in our lives, its peaks and valleys, its joys and trauma. My Lord and my God who embraces our suffering and carries us forward. So let us go out into the world and breathe God's liberating, life-giving love. By the air of the spirit, the putty of trust, the glue of friendship, the cement of scripture, serving a purpose, beautifying the world, testifying to the power, the strength, and possibilities of limitations embraced. So remember to breathe. Maybe I invite you right now, all of us, breathe. Out, in and breathe out. Take that breath, take that new expanded capacities out into the world. Go and share Jesus's breath in the world. Amen.